see you guys soon. Oh. Alright, today is um January 2017. All the folks on live coming coming on like the early notification will faster. Subscriber. Dipsy Brianna, yes, good afternoon. Elsie, uh, Anjali, yes, Jared. All right, full crew here so far. Is Mark uh, I told you I am on 966 subs on um, YouTube. 54 more. I guess you've been doing your part to oh, like the um, like the video, like the um, like the video one time so it um, will propagate and people will get in with it. Good, good, good. Grace Charles. Grace, this is the first time I'm seeing you. Yeah, you're from Grace. Ah, uh, no. Instagram is not 45, 985, so go on Instagram to make me one. But keep spreading the word. Keep spreading the word. So people like. Grace. Is the first time you're coming to my live? They post it in the student hub too. Put it in your lobby, put it in your um, put it in your CSEC IT, whatever. Share it up. I will start on the five minute mark. Things that are all right. I'll put any link in. This is where you do your stuff and share it. Bismarck, I'll see a share it in the yeah, yeah. I don't forget to share it in the lobby too. Folks know. Is it have any more ITP? How much we on there? 446. Alright, so at five o'clock. I mean at five five minutes we start in. All those on the inside, make sure you like. Because once you like, it will um it will reach the more people faster. And they'll get notifications and all that stuff. So uh 
Alright, so once you're ready, um Alright, five minutes up. Two like share and some of the thumbs up and uh, once I see the thumbs up some of them start to coming in. Here we go. Nice. Alright. And we pump in. Yeah boy. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Write the appropriate name for the IT professional who performs each of the following tasks, right? So there's jobs, um, determines access privileges for the database, that'll be database administrator. Repairs, malfunctioning, computer equipment. This will be a technician. Computer technician. Cool. I describe the function of the following in a computer system, the control unit. Um, the control unit. Coordinates input and output and you. You could also say something like it um directs instruction. to the ALU. I don't want of those will be okay. Um, Bismarck wants to know if a service technician and a computer technician, same thing, yeah. Once you have technician in it, technician is the, is the part of it. Um, next one, arithmetic logic unit. This one um, does Mathematical calculation to compute program program code. All right, so it does mathematical calculations. Um, Execute program code. Mm. Alright, we're good. Now we're on to CPU, central processing unit. So central processing unit is um receives inputs and basically that's what the CPU does um, you could also say that it is um, I see I don't want to use back the word processing so um is Mark for brain? Yeah, you could put something like brain acts as a brain R E I N. So, All right, so actually, what the CPU does is gets the input and gives appropriate outputs based on the processing that takes place, right? So, the ALU and the CU will do the um, processing part because the CU is like the um, CU is like a uh, a traffic warden. I'll say who's to come, who's to stop, who's to wait, when it's time to go, when it's time to stop. And uh, the CU will decide, okay, ALU, can you handle this? And the ALU will say, yes, yeah, send more for me. And the ALU will do the calculations. And when the calculations are done, the CU will decide which output it has to go to. 
So since both of them are part of the CPU, it receives inputs and gives the appropriate output, which is um, it's kind of hard to describe your CPU without using the word processing, but um, sometimes you have to try, try your best not to answer back the question with the words in the question because it sounds kind of cringy and nobody wants to sound cringy. Andrew consists of the CU and ALU and together they execute tasks. Yeah, you could say execute tasks. Um, receives and yeah, receives input, executes tasks. Tasks. Yeah, we can live with that. Receives inputs, executes tasks, and gives appropriate outputs. Yeah, that song. That song is more polished. Yeah, thanks. Well done. All right, in the box below, draw a diagram showing the relationship between control units. I really can draw that a this is the box, this is the CPU, this is the CPU, this is the ALU, you and the ALU will talk to each other. Nothing too special there. All right, any questions? Are they good? All right, advance forward now. Binary, no, oh, no binary. Syllabus. So there you go. All right, a technician was checking to see if it need if a computer need a replacement part. State the specification component. All right, a word size is the um. Sixty-four bits. Sixty-four bits. All right. Remember, the word size is the ma maximum amount of um bits that a uh, CPU could process. So it's either be sixty-four or thirty. Processor type is um Intel Pentium. Pentium four. Um, then processor speed is anytime you see gigahertz, that means what that's what you're looking for when you think about processor speed. What you're looking for, say, is 3.6. Right? Um, remember the name of the processor will always have something like Intel or AMD. Usually, well, for these answers, they have other processor makers, yeah, but um, usually the words that come before is the name of the processor. What bit will be the word size, meaning how much it can handle. So you either say 64, 32, and gigahertz will be the speed of the processor. Some, something point something, and gigahertz will be the measurement app. All right, everybody understand the processor part there, because this question could come in multiple ways, and sometimes it is be a little tricky. Hi Sherry, I get in her class today. I hope your class in school was good yesterday and you enjoy the fact that they teach us trying to teach. Oh nice. Alright, type of RAM is SD RAM. Um memory capacity. So the type will always have SD RAM and I have the They might see either one or the two. 
memory capacity, well, that's easy capacity. You also see gigabytes, so these capacities so 2G. And any speed of the RAM, once you see hertz, hertz, just put the number there in front of it. So 533. Any questions? All good there. Cool. Moving on. Alright, storage device being described is this is because you see HDD, that is hard disk. Alright. If it opens the disk, that's okay because it's a hard drive. HDD is short for hard disk drive. Storage capacity is easily 160 gigabytes. And yeah, Bismarck, you're on the ball today, you're on the ball today. Let's see you come out for them. That's not. Tag. Speed is 7200 RPM. RPM is revolution per minute. That's basically how fast a hard drive would spin, right? It would spin, it would spin, it would spin, it would spin. The device interface is SATA. However, device interface is not on the new syllabus. Probably won't add something like that. Should still know it. Or you should still at least be able to pick that out that there's something right there. All right. Thumbs up before we move on. Identify one input or output device as useful for each of the following situations. Visually impaired. If you're visually impaired, you can't see properly. So you could probably use a is it input or output device, right? So a speaker would be nice. Because if you can't see, at least you could hear via a speaker. Um, for input device. Will be out. Input. Um, you could probably see a braille keyboard. Yeah, braille keyboard sounds solid. To use by the hearing impaired. Um, input. I notice if input out would be a monitor. In would be a uh, hearing aid. I don't know. That's all I could think of. Some kind of way. Good. 
7 سال دینا Anybody have a different input device for hearing impaired? Headphones for hearing impaired? I don't understand. Headphones for that will be louder. Mm -hmm. um. I guess they will take it. I don't see any reason why they won't. Alright, flight, flight simulation program would be a joystick um, To produce an electronic signature would be um, a digital tablet So digitizing tablet IT. Yeah, digitizing tablet that will be a good input device for electronic signature. I don't know what else. A, a touch screen wouldn't be good enough because touch screens not as sensitive as a digitizing tablet. A digitizing tablet will actually sense the different pressure points. Like if you write a signature and some part has to be like well, darker than the other and the next part kind of thin, that screen then will be able to pick up that. But digitizing tablet will be able to pick up the different points of pressure. Then again, I've seen I've seen mark schemes already and sometimes they'll just be like, all right, touch screen. And we the markers will just have to be like, well, Okay. Thanks. All right, the diagram below represents the surgery device. This is a floppy, but floppy is no longer on the syllabus. Nope, 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 nope. Device interfaces all are not on the syllabus anymore. So we proceed. Following scenario describes an example of an automated computerized application. Okay, so look, we get a nice scenario question here. Right, so let, let me try to see because this looks like 2020 material. So, this is an automated system in you know, with industrial information. So, it reads data about heat generated in a reactor. Um, then it sends instructions to a device. And then users are to determine if it's working efficiently in regulating the flow of water to cool the reactor. So, if you get it, if you get into the scenario, you're thinking, all right, there is a, a plant or something where it's generating heat. And in order for the things to stay cool, they're running water past it. Just like how you know, if you want to get something cool, put it in a fridge. Or, or you can rest it in a river. I want to rest it in a river, the water keep passing and cool and then cool. Right. Or like when you make tea, take the tea and you keep throwing it over. From one cup into the next cup. And if you ever see a granny do it, but grannies use that all the time. Tea, from one cup and throw it into the next cup. And that way used to cool it down, right? So it's our cooling down system thing. So the data that could be entered will be temperature. Yeah, Angeli, you're good. 
Um, okay, good. Our input device to enter the data will be a thermostat. Or you could get a thermometer. The thermostat is the actual kind of IT device. But I don't know if they will expect you to know exactly what thermostat is. Probably if you do like chemistry and physics, you might know what thermostat is. But um, if you do do chemistry and physics and everything, you might just put thermometer because you know how you measure. That's how you measure your body temperature. All right, identify one example of information that is output. Information that will be output will be, um, this is looking for efficiency in the flow of water that cools the reactor. So information will be out of the current temperature. A suitable output device to show you the current temperature will be our monitor. Because it would be nice to see it on a monitor. That would be nice. I forget the H in thermometer. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. Because. And sometimes in the writing so fast. Like, you know. Um, right, information as output, current temperature, yeah. So the final temperature of the water, yeah, that will be a good answer to this one. Um, suitable output device would be a monitor. I don't know what else would be a good output device. Good. Next thing you have a light flashing whenever the temperature too high. <laughs> People like, head. Flashing red light. So once the red light flashing, everybody know they're danger. Um, state whether processing in the scenario is batch online or real time, not on the all of us anymore. One other example of automated information processing system. Um, I think yeah, Bismarck, that'll be the answer, but it's um, not necessary to I want people to think that they need to answer that. Um, so Uh, they they want an example. They don't want a, a type. If it was a type, um, Andrew and Angeli, you could have put cam and card and them kind of things. But they want an example. So a soft drink fill checker, or you could say an alarm system. Those are automated. And like the alarm system will be like when the door open or the window close. It the alarm will go off now. Cool. 
three advantages of using an automated information system over a manual system would be efficiency, speed, lower cost, um, accuracy. Stuff like that. Anybody have any others? Cool. Moving on. In the following scenario, and answer the questions that follow. All right. Um, BBB, the technical term for the original document, right? So BBB is a company that uses a computerized system and they order information, right? The first bullet point. Now, what does normally do for these questions is kind of break it down into little um, points so that you'll be able to understand it. So the key part here is that there is a paper-based request form, right? Once you see that, you're cool. A data entry clerk enters the data into a computer system. So you have a data entry clerk put into the computer system. Then you have an administrative assistant re-enters the data into the same computer system. So this computer system and that computer system is the same computer system. They so had to kind of put that in, in context. Right? Then the computer system gives you a report and if the data is the same then um or not right if it says that the data is the same cool if it's not the same then the administrative assistant has to make correction and that will make a that will make a big difference so the computer system then produces a purchase request and we go with that all right so the form that's generated Yes, you all are correct. Source document. Um, then it asks whether the original document is machine readable or human readable. It says that the put the original document um, is not machine readable because a human has to read it. So it's human. Because literally a human has to read it and type it into a computer. So somebody reads the piece of paper and then they start to type, right? The term used for re-entering data. If you're re-entering something, that means you're doing it twice. So that is double data entry. So you enter the data twice. Um, and then they say explain why it is useful. It is useful because 
it find errors quickly and accurately. All right, so double entry will be good. Double entry is a part of um, um, verification. Remember, with verification, you could have double entry or you could have visual checks. Same thing, right? Um, yeah, Jared, yeah, it makes sense because it's... Um, Dominique, um, dual input is an okay answer, but the actual term is double data entry. So that's kind of, again, you have to using that. Dual input, I don't know if they will accept it. I'd rather you put double data entry because that's a, the actual technical term, and sometimes you have to make sure you write the technical term. Okay, name the file organization as most suitable. Um, they don't have file organization anymore. Wait, do they? I think they do. No, I think you don't know. Yeah, file organization index sequential. I'm not too sure, but we'll answer it still. Because I think this is this is not part of the file organization. It's part of the database section now, I, I believe. If I, if I remember correctly, but I can't remember exactly. So the most suitable file organization would be serial. Um because there is no definite order right serial is when the information comes in you just put it in one at a time um one after the other so um no type of order and if they put it in sequential sequential is when you put it in some sort of alphabetical order the storage device that most suitable to store data for any purchase requests would be like a hard drive Because is on a computer. Nothing hard there. Eh? Oh, Bismarck and Chelsea are learning something there. Eh? That's good to know. Good to know. I love to see when these color hats come out. You know, give my sense of purpose in this life. <laughs> All right, one data check and explain how it could be used to confirm that the data entered is accurate. Um, yeah, one data type check to confirm that it's accurate. One number. The Consistency. All right, so you can look at a consistency check. Consistency is a check between two fields to see if they match. Or to see if they are right. All right, so we good there. I right, told so take a share break now. Um, screenshot it on um, put it on Instagram or something. I'm gonna get a snack, and not going to be a good kick.
this cake today. This is good to see my wife. Are they share anything? Oh, chocolate. Steve, Steve, I can't eat out all the biscuits. I'll just save them. All right, so we're jumping back in there. Productivity tools. Ooh, look at Microsoft Word productivity tool question. These are very rare. Nice to see that. So there's an extract, and the, the extract is this, and they're doing Microsoft Word, right? So basically, what they're saying is read the document and see if you can pick out the formatting feature. So, three formatting features would be here's clearly bold. It clearly is in italics. That there's clearly underlined. Area lines are right them three words wide. The number of paragraphs after each of the following tasks is performed. Paragraph two is moved below. Moved below abstract one. You still have two because it was moved. If it was copied, then you would have three. They're basically checking to see if you understand copy and paste or cut and paste. When you cut something, you are moving it. When you're copying it, you are making a duplicate of it. All right, the reason word spiral in us on the line for emphasis. What other reason do we underline word for? Using the switch on your place option, all occurrences of cyber to be changed to cyber cam. Get the results after this change. Was that blame? If the date still as is, yeah, as it stands right now, yeah, the date still as is. I don't know. I have no new information. You? You're here in September or you know it's September? If you don't have the actual information, then you go out. Unless the XC make our official statement, we just wouldn't know.
they will have to say. Alright, using the search and replace option, all occurrences of sidebar to be changed. See the result after this change. The word sidebar will change to cybercrime. How much times? One once they will change one. That's all. Wait. Only learn something they waited it. Which part of that only learn? I thought I was straightforward. That's Yan Bismarck, which um which part of that was new to you? Search and replace. Okay, search and replace. Find and replace. Let's actually go through each. Um, let's go through the whole document and find whichever word it sees, and then replace that word with another word. I can't believe. Yeah. For sure. I'll let me create some text equal and. Some random text. Alright. So let's say I want to find the word word in here. I'll go to something like that. Okay, so yeah, find and replace. If I go to replace the single pop up and I want to I want to find the word word and change it with ah Ha 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 ha. And also the exclamation marks. When I click replace, everywhere the everywhere in the um everywhere in the text that had the word word will change to ha 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 ha. This here, yeah, yeah. That's the find and replace feature. Find and replace is using life when you like you spell somebody's name wrong in a whole document. Over and over. And you can just fix it in one swoop. Fine, Henry. Alright. Back to our regularly scheduled program. <clears throat> consider the following, which consists of a sample of items in a supermarket, their cost and barcode. Alright, so this is our database. This is the actual table in data sheet view. But we want to see what it looks like in design view. When we design any table, item is going to be text or short text. Cost is going to be currency. Barcode is going to be text or short text. Something so. And yeah, you know this text because well, there's text. You know this currency because it's money values. You know this is um, well, I would um, text because it's alpha character. Field that can be used as a primary key. Well, it be the most unique field that there is is barcode. So, barcode. So, both sides of the barcode field, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So, six. Six will be the field size. 
and the result of a query that finds all items that cost less than five dollars that'll be that water Field name and order of the sorted records in the table. This is sorted by ABC FG. It's sorted by barcode in descending order. Barcode in descending order. Right, so the reason it's sorted by barcode in descending order is that the name of the field is barcode and we can see it's descending order because we have X, then M, then D, then A. So that's descending. Um, wait, that's Ananda, Ananda. Like. And under from school. So that's how you know the barcode is in order. And Eh, eh. Look, Ananda, join my live stream, yes? Wherever I'm going in life, I reach. Uh, I reach. Okay, so we're good. All right, thumbs up if you're good there. Scholar hats if you learn anything. And we're moving on to the section three, which is cake. That's cake. All right, so this is study the algorithm below and answer the questions that follow. Oh my goodness. Look at the insult to your intelligence. All right, identify one line in the algorithm above that contains item following. An assignment statement. Assignment statement will be like total is equal to zero. Anytime you have something equal to something else, you take a number and put it inside a variable. That's called our assignment. Statement. One. Our assignment. Nine nine. Eight. And one eight or nine. Right. I mean the question said one liner by giving you all three just so that you know. Now this is not Pascal Chelsea, this is um this is an algorithm. It's not have any semicolons and code and call sign and all them. Right, start of a loop is well once you see while that means a loop starting, so the loop will be line two. Um a output statement. Output statement will anything that will have the word print. Display so, like here, display that is out because you're sending it out for the user to see. So, that'll be line 11. Um, next one is a condition. So, a condition will be like, um, either if 
something 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 right so uh, so wherever you see if something 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 that comes after that's the condition so if subject is already entered that's definitely a condition so line four and then you have a next if here if total is equal to three that's a next one to line six because of that if right um or oh, line two is a condition also because it's while while total is less than equal to five so yeah this mark you're correct a relational operator relational operators will either be equal signs less than or equal to greater than or equal to less than more than because they they show you how they are relating one variable to another variable so all the relational operators will tell you what is the comparison of this with respect to that so relational operator here will be um with less than or equal to which will be a line two or if total is equal to three that will be our next relational operator so you're checking the relations so that'll be six two or six any one of those will be good All right, so we get there. Fucking move on to the next one. Okay, so now we want to complete the following base table in the algorithm. All right. I'm going to clean it up for you so that we could see it properly. All right, cool. So, let's say the person put in English B as the subject. So, a prompt to enter the numerical subject if the subject is already entered. So if we get English B first, that means the subject was never already entered because it's the first subject that we're getting. So if the subject is already entered, then prompt to enter another subject. But we're not prompting to enter another subject. We can put if total is three. What is the total? Total starts off at zero. So we're going to now say. If the total is equal to a five percent discount, total is equal to total plus one. So we're not doing this part here. We're not giving a five percent discount for the first one. We just gonna say total is equal to total plus one. So total gonna go up to one. Discount gonna be zero. Is that the first time the loop runs? Right. Because I remember this question, a lot of people just get confused with it. Do you understand why the discount is zero and the total is one based on the first run of the algorithm? Actually, what I'm going to do is I'll put it right next to each other. Subject. Discount. And total. So then you'll get confused with us switching back to back. So the subject first English is English B. Right, so the English B there. <sighs> English B. Let's say the English B is where this first line here is going to run. Prompt to enter the name of the subject. So the name of the subject that we got is English B. So we're dealing with, with anything with this English B here. If the subject has already entered, have they entered a subject already? No. Um, so it's not going to um, it's not going to prompt to enter another subject. So it's not going to do anything. 
then it's going to say if total is equal to three is total equal to three no the last thing that we know is total was zero so therefore it won't do this five percent discount because it's if total is equal to three then give five percent discount so it won't do that and it won't do that what it will do is it will do the last one which is this else here which is going to just be total is equal to total plus one so this is actually what is going to happen so total is going to go up to one discount will stay at zero or blank or whatever it is doesn't matter all right so let me know if that makes sense all right cool so i'll go and rub off the the um stuff again so we can kind of trace exactly what is taking place all right so now the second thing that we're going to get is woodwork okay so we are inside this while loop right now right so we're going to enter the name of the subject the subject that we're going to get is woodwork now we had to ask the question if the subject has already entered has woodwork been already entered no it hasn't so therefore we are not going to prompt for another subject so this if then is dead <clears throat> then now we're going to say if total is equal to three is total equal to three no total is equal to one right now so therefore we are not going to give our five percent discount we're not going to carry the total by one we're just going to say else total is equal to total plus one so we're going to do this the so total goes up to two discount is still zero good are you following All right, cool. Moving on. Good thing that we're going to get now is English B. E N G L I S H B. All right, so let's rub off all of this here. Rub off. So our above all of that, we still with any while loop because total never get um one and five yet. So we're still inside the while loop. This while loop now gonna stop until we get total um greater than five, right? So prompt enter the new subject. This time we're gonna get English B. So we got English B, and now they're gonna say if the subject is already entered. Is English B already entered? Yes, because we got it here the first time. So now this then is going to prompt to enter a new subject. So enter a new subject that is now going to make us now get mathematics. So what's going to happen is that the total is going to stay at two, and the discount is going to stay at zero. Because we just entered a new subject, so the new subject now is mathematics. That's why we're dealing with the mathematics row now. Right? So in the mathematics, now you're going to see if total is equal to 3. Is total equal to 3 yet? No, it never reached 3. So then we don't have any 5% discount. Because it never happened. And this total equal to total. We're just going to do this. The total is going to become 3. And this one will stay at 0. And that's all that's going to happen there for that trace table. The loop will actually run more. And they will actually get more subjects. And all that stuff. But the table that they gave us is just to fill up up to mathematics. So... The fact that this discount never never happened is okay. If they if they told us to write a full tree stable for it, we'd have keep going until we get total equal to arms. Um, but that's enough for now.
All right, so let's go ahead now. State one suitable data type for each of the following variables. Add I Pascal. So you would need to know the task it. Identify which is not an elementary data type. No, that's, that's Pascal. Number 10. What they want us to do with it. Consider the following algorithm. Write the Pascal program. Nope, no Pascal program in there. Consider the programming code in the following table. In the programming language. You know that, boy? These two parts here you don't need to know, but you could do part C. Answer the following questions based on the code written in example one. So this table has an instruction which is like accept display number text, and they have the um they have the type of code that it is written at. What they want you to do is identify error in the code. The error is here. Because they have this and this one has this. <laughs> so this this PISP is supposed to be PIS. Well, they have it right here. Correct the error that should be used, which should be G. Right, everybody understand that, that concept here? They give you the instruction and they tell you that this is what it's supposed to look like, but in this in this list of code here it have DISP data saying instead of this. Um then die Jones road to 1k. I know that now. Right now the tube on 968. I still need a whole 32 again to make that um, to make that 1k. And one ten is next week. So hopefully over the weekend, or they could push, or they could push it up to um, push it up to get thirty more. Slowly but surely, it probably like about ten people every day, or there about. But I think the Instagram doing better. Instagram right now pushing um nine eighty six. So fourteen more to go on Instagram and. Okay. Um, Bismarck, you want to know if I save any crash course video? Now, uh, when we I'm gonna finish answering this, I'm gonna finish answering the questions and then I'll answer your question, right? Bismarck, about the crash course. So that all you uh, we know what's going on. I say the technical term for each of the following program original programming code is called um, source code because you get it from the source, which is the human. Human, but it's in the source code. Locating errors in our program is called debugging because you are literally looking for. In the first programs that they used to have, they used to have these vacuum tubes, and a moth used to get inside it sometimes. And when the moth get inside, the calculations used to be wrong, so they started going to take all the actual moth from it, which is a bug. So that was Google it if you think I'm lying. Um, type the error found in the code given in part C. Type of error. Right, so if you have a type of error where you have like a spelling, spelling error would be syntax. And conversion of the code in example two would be, um, Assembling. Yeah, that would be like assembly language, assembly or compiling. Yeah, compiling would be a good one. All right, we write the code in C using the instruction column in the table. Write the code in C. The 
in the instruction column or accept number accept text the number so what i wanted to do is say accept number uh, text the number Thomas, well boy, I know what to tell you. If you're never learning any of this in school, ah, uh, sorry. You should know source code, you should know debugging, you should know syntax. Crash course for you, Thomas. Stay tuned to the Instagram page. So accept the number. That is accept number, accept text, display number. So I have it right there. Accept number, accept text, display number. That's what the code will do. Um, the correct code is executed by the output when the following data were entered by the user. So it accepts the number, it accepts the text. So then it will just print past. Because it just taken over text here, it will be repassed and printing it back out. Oh, hey, Kaz, name was the scene. I didn't know that your name was not Thomas. Right, so that'll be there, and then number 12, arrays, no arrays, arrays, no arrays, it's kind of easy. Um, right, that is it. That is all. Go over the last part. The... the in the code it says accept number, then accept text, and then with it's display the number, display the text, or display number. My bad. Or look at that time or something. It's really 56 is the answer. So it's going to accept the number, it's going to accept the words, but it's going to only going to print back out the number. So the 56 will get print back out. That'll be the output. Well, they want to know the output when the code is executed so when the computer actually runs these three instructions the first one will get the 56 the second one will get the word passed and then it will display one number it got which is the number right that should be good there yeah right yeah so bismarck was asking about um if the if i go down and save the crash course videos the crash course videos will only be for the people that are in the crash course they're not going to be um, available um, publicly. So once the information for the crash course goes out, it will most likely go out on Instagram. Um, you pull out the information and register, just like if you're registering for any other crash course. But I guess I'm not paying any money this time. And um, whoever registered, will get put into you'll get put into a specific um undisclosed location and at that undisclosed location all the information will be shared with you after kind of like you're going to like you know a secret layer all right so here are the key this 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 and this will be able to get that for the crash course cover but of course you gotta make the one key so they um they share the channel and share the instagram get people to get people to jump in because um if it's not one key then if i don't get the one key then it'll be 300 a person and crash course will most likely be in the second week of april which should have which would have been like a second week of vacation come around there would have be a second week of vacation We'll be inside there and it'll just be for one week and we're gonna ampel through the whole syllabus piece by piece bit by bit any question you ask i will answer just as i can but it's a crash course so i can't teach over fundamental things that you never learn from form three but you know you're gonna learn, you're gonna learn plenty 
So, I'll let you know the drill. Share to the, share to the folks, and we in our gear. To all the Jamaican people out there, let us see. Ah, ah, ah. I uh, well, I realize that our real Jamaicans watching the channel now. Peace on yam. Alright, so we're going there. Tomorrow, tomorrow, yeah, I done there for the week, right? Tomorrow, I had to focus on some Cape stuff. So I'm going to start to do some Kamsai things. And, um, I still go down and upload some theory videos. So I could look out on the channel. Put the bell on. Put the notification bell on so you'll see when a video get uploaded. And that will also help you so you're going to know when I go live too. Yeah, put the bell on so when I upload the, the theory videos on them, you'll get some stuff. So next week I'm not doing any lives for, um, for CSEC. I just go down and start to upload one set of theory videos. So you all could start to brush up on your theory because I think... um. I think some of them never even see some of the theory parts of the syllabus yet. So, so the theory playlist on the um on the channel gonna start to get beef up from next week, so they could watch those kind of film something. Have a good day. Bye bye. Take it easy. I'll see you all on Sunday night live. Sunday night live as usual from eight o'clock. I'll be um I'll be on when I'll most likely be doing our next paper Sunday night. If we finish the whole thing, we finish it. If we don't, we don't.